Hi everyone, this is Britt Simon. Um, so I'm going to continue my series of uh, videos uh, with regard to Asia uh, in this case and talk about the, the numbers and the likelihood of, uh, of Asia cases getting current. So um, hopefully by now you've watched the other video which explains all of the factors that come into play. And in Asia there is certainly those sort of factors we need to consider, right? Because um, there are four countries that are affected by the uh, the immigrant ban and the Muslim ban or the travel ban. Um, and so, uh, you know, there is big impact of that and there could be impacts of the pandemic um, to the Asia region over the next year or so. Um, and, you know, and, and there will be the election impact as well. So there's, there's tons of stuff going on and we really need to try and talk about these things. And let me just start at the outset saying, if you're expecting me to say, um, here's a number and you're safe below that number uh, and you're not safe above that number, I'm sorry, you're going to be disappointed in this video because it is not possible to be as precise as that for the Asia region or really any of these regions um, in this year because there's just too many factors going on. It would be an unwise person that would be uh, so confident as to be able to make some sort of estimation at this point. Um, and, you know, many people will try that. Many people will, uh, will be convinced they know. Um, but you're not going to hear me making such an unwise statement. So, you know, if that's what you're looking for, you know, sorry, you can move on. Um, so let's talk about some of the factors very briefly then. So uh, if we look at the numbers here, um, and we know that there are, I've, I've done a little count up of the numbers, in AS, in Asia region there's 25,408 uh, selectees that have been chosen, which I think will be around about 14,500 uh, cases. Uh, that's a significant increase over the number of cases in 2020, the number of cases in 2019, and in fact in 2018 as well. It's a significant um, increase in the number of cases. And cases are, to me, more important than um, case numbers, right? Because uh, if you've got 5,000 cases, but it's spread over 50,000 case numbers. Who cares? That uh, you know that that means 90% holes, right? In this case, we have in this year in DV 2021, based on the number of selectees we have and a, an approximate derivative rate, which I've taken there based on 2020 numbers, um, we would have something like 14 and a half thousand cases. Uh, that means that out of the number range that we have and I'm not certain on this highest number range it could be a little bit low I think there could be higher case numbers assigned than the 35 XXX range I'm giving here but if we assume that 14 and a half thousand cases are you know, roughly there then we have um, you know we have a, a percentage uh, of number of holes for the whole range um, that would be throughout the cases there's only 14,000 cases and let's say 35,000 numbers, right? That means that there are 20,000 holes in that 35,000 range. Now, where are the holes? Um, it's really difficult to say exactly where the holes will be, but I'll show you in a moment previous years that you'll understand how the holes distribution will work. Um, uh, basically, um, you know, if we look at previous data, and I've, I'm showing 2018 data here for Asia, um, in 2018, you can see quite clearly that there are, uh, if out of every 100 cases, the blue number at the top is holes and other colors represent actual real cases. Uh, 2020 looked different. Uh, if we look at 2020 data and we look at uh, region of Asia, um, there were a lot more holes in 2020 because they implemented a new security procedure that eliminated a lot more of the cases before the announcement even happened. Right, so as you can see, the number of, the number of cases which were holes, um, you know, looked a lot more in 2020, and so we will see the same sort of thing again in DV 2021, but um, the DV 2018. Uh, numbers show much better the sort of the cliff faces I call it where uh, there's almost you know very few holes in Asia 
and then all of a sudden there's a drop off the cliff. What causes that drop off is when Iran and uh, Nepal reach their maximum numbers that they've been assigned, which means that all of the Iranian and uh, Nepalese numbers are in that sort of early block in 2018. In the same way, in 2020, uh, the, the, there are two sort of cliff face uh, you know, ranges here. There's the first one that happened and around about 12,000. I've forgotten the numbers now, but around about 12,000, there was the first stop. And then there was another stop at around about 15,000. So again, I, I forget which was which, but I think it was uh, the first cliff face or the first stop of numbers is where Nepal reached its max, maximum assigned case number. And the second, uh, the second cliff face was where Iran uh, met its maximum assigned case number. So that meant that there were no... Uh, uh, numbers above that, there were no longer Nepalese or Iran um, cases, and by that time, therefore, the the holes rate was extremely high. We're going to see something like that again in DV 2021, but it won't be exactly like that, and the distribution will be somewhat different because the uh, number of entries from each country has has changed. So if we look at the Asia numbers, for example, there's Iran with their 6,000 cases. Uh, there's Nepal with, uh, uh, Nepal with 3,801 cases. But this year, there are some significant uh, large uh, numbers assigned to other countries. Afghanistan's got quite a few. Uh, Sri Lanka has quite a few there. Uh, Yemen has you know, a decent amount of cases, etc. Jordan uh, has, you know, a significant number of cases. Uh, Iraq, you know, there's significant. Now, if we look at last year, Jordan only had 633. What is it this year? It's more than doubled, right? Um, <clears throat> Afghanistan last year was at 981. This year, again, it's more than doubled, right? And uh, Sri Lanka this year, 1566. Last year, 1765. Again, it's just slightly more than doubled right? So um, have we had double the number of cases uh, or the num number of selectees? No, last year was about 15,000 with 9,000 cases. This year is 25,000 with about 14,500 cases. So it's a big increase, perhaps 60% uh, more than last year, but it's not doubling. And so what that means is that we've had a higher proportion of cases from some of these countries like Afghanistan, like Jordan, etc. There's been a higher proportion of entries from those countries and therefore they've got more winners in those countries. And so to some extent there's going to be a, uh, a less pronounced cliff. It'll look probably more like this where you, we will see cutoffs, we will see uh, you know, a cliff face like here, but the continuation um, of, of numbers will be higher than we're seeing here. I think it's going to be more like 20 to 30 percent uh, cases and 70 percent holes, something like that. And we may even see, um, uh, in fact, no, we won't see, we won't see any other countries being limited. It'll just be those two, 6,000 for Iran and Nepal for uh, 3,800. None of these other uh, countries have reached the limits where they would need to be limited during the draw, draw process. If you don't understand, by the way, about why some countries are limited during the draw process and why we have that sort of uh, situation where Nepal and Iran have all of their numbers condensed into the lower ranges, then you need to look at my uh, video that explains this on holes theory. Um, I've, I've produced uh, a number of um, videos and, uh, and articles on that subject and you can read and educate yourself about that. So I won't go into a lot of detail on that now, but for the time being you can understand that although there are 35,000 case numbers, there are not going to be Nepalese case numbers at 20,000 or 30,000. It's just not going to happen. We're going to see a cutoff um, of the uh, allocated numbers, not a cutoff at the end of the year, but a cutoff at the allocated numbers to Nepal and Iran, where uh, beyond a certain number range, they get no, no further case numbers, right? 
allocated. I'm not talking about cutoffs at the end of the year. Again, I'm talking about the allocation at this point. So, um, so that's going to happen, and we'll see that in the numbers. And when we see that in the numbers, you will see this sort of cliff face effect. Uh, and, we'll, and we'll see this data, the equivalent of this data, in January of uh, next year. We don't get access to the C8 data until January the 1st. Um, so that's when we're going to see that confirmed. Okay, so um, so that's the first thing that I wanted to cover with you to make sure that's understood. Um, there are, uh, if, if we look at this now, we can see there are you know certainly more cases, uh, more selectees than um, you know than usual. That uh, does not bode well for high case numbers. That that means that there could be some sort of risk for high case numbers. Um, but there is a couple of factors that will come into this, um, and you know perhaps change things during the the whole period. Out of those twenty five thousand case numbers, actually almost eight and a half thousand of those are currently banned, right? Because we've got. Uh, Burma or Myanmar um, with 776, uh, 776 selectees there that are currently impacted by a, a travel ban. Not just the immigration ban that's going to court, but a travel ban. Um, we've got Iran that is currently impacted by that. That's 6,000 selectees, right, who can't currently, mostly can't proceed with their cases. Uh, we've got Syria, 487 selectees and we've got Yemen 1222 so if we add those up those come to 8486 people out of the 25,000 there so it leaves us with about 17,000 people who can process their cases all right that's based on the travel ban now <laughs> this is where things are going to get wild because we now have to consider the situation where if uh, if Trump loses the election in November, he would be replaced as president of the USA uh, in January, right? Uh, currently, the political pundits, the uh, you know all the surveys and the um, you know all of the information that we have suggests that Trump is going to lose the election. But who knows? He may or may not lose the election. If he loses the election and the new government comes in in January, they are likely to remove things like the travel ban. And by that time, the immigrant ban that we're currently suffering with will be removed either by the lawsuit or uh, by, by the natural ending of that in, uh, on December 31st, unless, of course, Trump wins uh, the election, then that could be continued. But if Trump loses, then the immigrant ban and the travel ban are almost certainly going to be taken away, uh, removed by the new government, which means that those 8,500 selectees that were previously blocked suddenly will be able to get to process their cases again. And that will mean that high case numbers don't have a chance. Right? Essentially, that will be the nail in the coffin for high, high case numbers. If, on the other hand, Trump wins, we might not have the travel the the immigrant ban anymore that might expire on December 31st um, and uh, or it might it might be blocked by the courts right but the travel ban has been tested through the courts and can stay in place and probably will stay in place for as long as Trump is president right um, in which case those eight and a half thousand people that are banned in Iran and Burma and Syria and Yemen probably remain banned throughout the period of DV 2021 and won't be able to process their cases. So that's a significant portion of these 25,000 selectees. And for that reason alone, it really is impossible, impossible to be confident about what's going to happen in, uh, during the year for uh, high case numbers. So if you're sitting there with a case number such as Asia 30,000 or Asia 32,000 or whatever, um, you know, you are uh, you. You have to pay attention to the election. And if I were you, I would not be submitting a DS two hundred and sixty because it declares immigrant intent. Uh, and I would wait for the election, and I would hope that Trump loses. If I were you, uh, sorry, I would hope that Trump wins. If I were you, um, because that's going to help you if you're a high case number. On the other hand, if Trump wins, um, he'll find other ways to block you. Um, and he's a scumbag anyway. So, you know, we don't want Trump to win, frankly. Um, 
but it will mean that uh, your opportunity for uh, for the green card through the DV lottery process is probably going to evaporate if Trump loses. So, um, so you know, I don't know how you want to sort of sort that out in your own heads, but at least you understand, you know, what what could be happening there. The other thing that could happen, of course, is the pandemic could continue to affect um, uh, the embassies. And, uh, you know, we may see embassy closures, we may see the pandemic cases rise in certain countries, and they may decide locally to close a particular um, embassy. That could affect people. The passport rule uh, that was implemented, we don't know how that's going to be um, affecting cases yet. I suspect most countries in Asia, um, uh, you know, probably abided correctly through by the passport rule. Um, but there could be a higher level of denials than we normally see because of the uh, because of people, uh, you know, abusing the passport rule exceptions. Um, that's possible, um, and that's probably you know that's probably the main factors that are, that are going to affect uh, Asia. That's the main things that are that are going to take place. Um, so uh, so there you go. That's that's. Uh, you know, that's an explanation of why it's very difficult to predict what will be the outcome. The quota for, um, for Asia region will be around about 8,600 visas. Um, and, you know, depending on what happens with those 8,500 people, we're either talking about 25,000 people competing for 8,500 visas or 8,600 visas, or we're talking about 17,000 people competing for 8,600 visas. So there is risk. Um, with or without uh, Trump winning the election. Um, there's risk both ways, frankly. And then there's also the factor that, um, again, we don't quite know what's going to happen about the lawsuit. There's a lawsuit trying to block the current immigrant ban. The immigrant ban, if not blocked, will continue until December 31st, 2020. It may be extended into next year if Trump is still in office. Um, and so... You know, we we're, that basically costs us some time. Uh, we've definitely lost October already. We may lose November and December in terms of processing time, and so therefore proce processing a full year's worth of cases in nine months rather than twelve months becomes more difficult, um, and therefore that's another sort of risk factor for um, you know for the for the lottery this year. Okay, a lot to take in. I understand that. Um, I will obviously be expecting questions about this. I, I'm sure, you know, I'm going to get lots of questions from people about, you know, here's my case number, it's Asia number, you know, whatever, please tell me I'm safe or not. I'm really not going to be able to entertain those sort of questions. I mean, if you've got a, if you've got a case number under let's say under 10,000, it was a rough idea. If you've got a case number under 10,000, you're asking me that question, frankly, you're wasting my time and yours because you know clearly your, your case number at 10,000 with the number of holes we're talking about here, um, you should be able to figure out that that, um, that isn't really a risky case, uh, you know, ris risky number. Once we get above 10,000, once we get above 15,000 or even 20,000, then obviously there's a lot more risk and I understand your uh, concerns. But but please don't waste my time with uh, questions about is my case of, you know, uh, 3,000 Asia, 3,000, is it risky? Um, you know, you need to pay attention and do a little bit of thought process on your own and figure out that, you know, we've got 8,600 cases, uh, 8,600 visas available. There's, uh, you know, a lot of holes during the whole range. Um, you know, a case number of three or four or five thousand; those are not risky numbers at all. Uh, whether you're from Nepal or or anywhere else, um, the last question that um, that I would be expecting is, um, or you know, another question I'd be expecting is, uh, when will ne Nepal hit the seven percent cap? That's a reasonable question. Um, there are 3,800 uh, 3, people selected. The global cap um, is based on the, the limit, which is 54,750. No single country can, can receive more than 7% of, um, of the visas globally. 
right? So no single country, in theory, could receive more than 3,832 visas this year. That's the, the theoretical uh, you know, number that no single country can have. Now, Nepal, in theory, therefore, should be absolutely fine because there are not enough um, selectees to even threaten that number. And some of these cases will be denied um, and some won't continue, won't, won't even respond, etc. So I suspect it's not going to be a problem. However, uh, some of these people are going to be single applicants that will get married. Some of these people of the 3,800 will be, you know, um, couples that will have a baby uh, during the time period. And so this number actually grows a little bit. So even though um, denials are yet to come out of here, we get very high response rates from Nepal. We get very good um, uh, issued rates from Nepal, very high issued rates. Most cases in Nepal are approved. Um, but, uh, you know, but still, even with that, I don't really anticipate more than 3,800 uh, people getting visas, uh, you know, even with the derivative growth rate, rate that comes from marriages and births. Um, I don't really expect that to be a problem. So um, I would be interested in hearing from people about uh, Nepalese highest case numbers. I know that there are some near 10,000, but I don't know where the, um, where the number actually uh, finishes. So if you'd like to let me know your high case number from Nepal, that would be interesting. And similarly, um, I'd like to know where Iran caps out. So uh, if you've got a number around about, uh, you know, of, of 10,000 or above in Iran, I'd also like to know about that one as well. There will be some people from these banned countries, by the way, Burma, Iran, Yemen and uh, Syria, who are able to process their cases because they meet certain exceptions. They're either living in the USA already or they uh, have one of the other sort of minor exceptions there are. There's a few people that can process those cases. And that's why they continue to select these, uh, you know, these countries. Those people are banned. Uh, temporarily, um, but who knows, the law could change and then those people would get unbanned, right? So, um, you know, that's why those people were entitled to enter the lottery and have been selected as winners in the lottery, even though the majority of the people in those countries cannot process their, their cases. Okay, so a lot of information packed into a short video there. I hope that was interesting and helpful for you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure you're disappointed. I'm not giving you clear answers in terms of numbers, but as you should be able to tell by now, all the factors involved are really making that impossible to do. Uh, and it would be unwise of me to try and give a sort of a solid cutoff number, particularly where there's so many factors that will come into play in Asia. All right, if you like this video, please give me a like, uh, thumbs up sign below, um, and uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, please. Uh, that helps with uh, disseminating this information out to people. Um, if you haven't understood something or if you've got a question to ask, you're better off asking that question at my blog on BritSimonSays.com. Um, I do try and answer the questions under YouTube videos, but uh, the method of answering here is just pretty awful. It's difficult to track questions and follow-ups, etc. So those questions are better off directed to me uh, at my blog uh, at BritSimonSays.com. So please, uh, please do that. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.